Do you remember that classic 90s table fan? Sure, it always blew air, but what made it special was the little button on the back. When you pressed it, the fan's head would swing side to side, spreading cool air across the whole room. Today, in this video, we're going to dive into how this table fan actually works, and we'll uncover the magic inside that button that makes it start oscillating the moment you press it. On the bottom side of this fan, you'll find a few buttons, three for speed control and one to turn the fan off. When you press the first button, the fan starts rotating at its lowest speed. Pressing the second button releases the first one and increases the fan speed. Similarly, pressing the third button releases the second and runs the fan at its maximum speed. Now, if we talk about the mechanics behind the buttons, each of these buttons has a spring underneath that keeps them pushed upward. These buttons make contact with a plate, which has a kind of slope and knot-shaped profile. When you press one of these buttons, let's say the first speed button, the plate starts sliding, which creates pressure on the spring located on its left side. This pressure pushes it toward the right. When you press the button further, the spring does its job, locking the plate into the notch. As long as the button stays pressed, the wire behind it sends an electric signal to the fan motor, telling it to rotate at the first speed. Now, when you press the second speed button, the plate slides left again, and the first button pops back up. The second button then locks into its notch and sends a new signal through the wire to increase the fan's speed. The same process happens with the third speed button. Pressing it releases the previous one and makes the fan spin at full speed. There's also one button that doesn't have any notch underneath. When you press this one fully, it just slides the plate to the left, releasing whichever button was previously pressed, and this turns the fan off. How the fan oscillates. The motor used to rotate the fan head is a single phase induction motor, the same motor that powers the fan's oscillation. Now wait, if a motor provides rotary motion, how does it make the fan head oscillate? To understand this, let's use the concept of a four-bar mechanism. Now, don't get confused that how I am shifting from oscillating fan to four-bar chain mechanism, or what is this four-bar chain mechanism? The four-bar mechanism is actually a simple way to understand this kind of mechanical movement. It consists of four bars connected by four pins, allowing them to move freely. One of the links always stays fixed while another rotates. This rotating part is called the crank and it's usually powered by a motor. Depending on the lengths of the remaining links, we get different types of mechanisms. For example, if two opposite links are of equal length, then when the crank rotates, the opposite link also rotates 360 degrees. This mechanism was used in train wheels to transfer rotary motion. Now, if the opposite link is longer than the crank, the crank's rotation causes oscillating motion, but that's not useful for our purpose. In our case, if we make the second and fourth link shorter and instead fix the link opposite the crank, then as the crank rotates, the link attached to it oscillates in a wider range. And that's exactly what we need. Let's see how this works in the fan's oscillation. At the back of the fan, similar bars are attached. One of these links is fixed. Directly in front of it is the crank, which is rotated using the fan's motor. Connected to this crank is another bar whose other end is connected to the fixed link. As the crank rotates, this bar starts oscillating, which causes the fan head to oscillate as well. Technically, this motor is connected to the fixed link at a single point. So we can assume the motor as a single bar in this system. 
Just like in the four-bar mechanism where the rotation of the crank causes the other two links to oscillate, here too, rotating this element makes the bar, and hence the fan head, oscillate. All right. We now understand that rotating this element with the help of the fan motor causes the attached link to oscillate. But the question is, if the motor shaft rotates on a horizontal axis, how is this element rotating on a vertical axis? Well, to convert horizontal rotation into vertical rotation, we use some gears hidden inside the gearbox. A worm pinion is fixed to the extended part of the fan motor shaft, and a worm gear is always in contact with it, constantly rotating along with the pinion. This is how the rotation shifts from horizontal to vertical. To transfer this rotation to the crank, we use two more gears. One is fixed to the crank, and the other is a gear formed on a shaft with gear teeth. This shaft passes through the center of the worm gear, so power can be transmitted from the worm gear to the crank gear. However, this shaft is not permanently in contact with the worm gear. Instead, a knob button brings it into contact. There's a hole in the shaft where two bearing balls compress a spring. Initially, before you press the button, when the fan isn't oscillating, the balls are stuck in the upper case of the gearbox. Now, when you press the knob button, the shaft moves downward. The spring pushes the bearing balls out of the upper case into the notch in the worm gear. This locks the shaft with the worm gear, and they start rotating together, which in turn rotates the crank gear and starts the fan's oscillation. And when you pull the button back up, the balls come out of the worm gear and return to the upper case, stopping the power transmission. As a result, the fan stops oscillating and continues blowing air in the same direction. So that's how the oscillation mechanism of a table fan works. Hope you liked my explanation. See you in the next video.